This material may seem like review and there's a good chance it is. Genotype versus phenotype is a very important concept that they like to test a lot and we'll just quickly touch on those to make sure any distinctions can be cleared up. The genotype is the actual genetic makeup. What are the genes present for a particular trait? And phenotype is the manifestation or you could say the expression of that genotype. Usually when you're talking about phenotype, it'll be something that is some physical trait because it's easier to illustrate. It's a lot easier to see a red flower versus a white flower than it is to other, understand other phenotypes. But phenotypes can be something that isn't immediately evident physically. It could be a behavioral thing. It could be anxiety in an experimental subject, or it could be something that isn't evident by looking at the organism, but is going on somehow. It could be enzymes that they're deficient in, or they have appropriate levels of. But realize that a phenotype is essentially the manifestation of that genotype. And it might be a single gene kind of thing, where it's just a simple relationship between the genotype and phenotype, or phenotype could be a much more complicated multi-gene quality. But realize that the phenotype is the manifestation or expression of that genotype. It can be physical and often is, but it can also be something that is behavioral or something that's not visible to the naked eye when looking at an organism. Genotypes and phenotypes are often expressed in terms of wild type and mutant because uh, the mutant ones are often of interest when you're studying genetics because the mutant ones are often the ones that alter homeostasis or are readily observable and it's something that you can much more easily isolate. Wild type is simply a term that talks about what you would see if you were in the wild. What is the typical thing that you would encounter for that trait with that organism, whereas mutant is something else? So, for example, a wild type leopard is one that has yellow fur with black spots, whereas a mutant phenotype might be something like a black panther. A black panther is a leopard, but its yellow fur actually has a lot of pigment, and so all of its fur appears black. Even though it has two different types of fur, they both are very similar looking because of that mutant gene that encodes a mutant phenotype that makes the black panther a black looking leopard, which differs from the wild type. Usually when wild type is encountered, especially on a standardized exam, they'll tell you what the wild type is versus the mutant. But just be aware that the term wild type means the type you're most likely to encounter in the wild. Another thing to be aware of with genotype versus phenotype is that oftentimes several genotypes can encode for the same phenotype. If it's a traditional dominant and recessive type of thing, uh, some organism that is heterozygous, so it has one of the dominant and one of the recessive genes, will have a dominant phenotype, much like something that is homozygous for the dominant phenotype. And so what you'll often find is that phenotype is more limited than genotype. And so that can be something you'll encounter in questions. There are a lot more genotypes typically than there are phenotypes. And so now we'll get into heterozygosity versus homozygosity. We'll get into dominance and recessiveness patterns and some unusual types of dominance like co-dominance and incomplete. And we'll also discuss penetrance and variable expressivity. And that will give you a good background for some of the trickier questions that involve genetics.